I'm here with Matt from the Yoga Net. Thank you very much for taking your time for the little interview with me. It's my pleasure. Um, you are very, very big on Instagram. You have more than 100,000 followers. And I would like to know, how does that help you with your business, with your yoga business? Well, it, it, for as far as the business goes, with being able to reach people, um, when I travel to teach, I have a, um, a platform to let people know that I'm going to be in one location or another, so that helps a lot. Um, in addition, I also teach online yoga, and so to reach people and let them know that there's opportunities to practice online uh, with me is another way that I use the Instagram as a, um, as a platform for communication. Yeah. And how did you get so big? How did you get so many followers? How did you do Well, that? I started out um, when I first... I was teaching in Manhattan for quite a, a long period of time, and I struggled to figure out um, how to get people to my workshops. Um, Facebook was helpful, uh, but it, it wasn't quite hitting it for me at the time. And I noticed um, a teacher came to the studio that I've been teaching at for six years at the time, and I worked really hard to get a lot of people in my in my workshops. I would just announce them in every class and every. Um, I did pretty well, but it would be like, you know, one per month I would get um, you know, about 50, 55 students, which was awesome for me. But this teacher who I never heard about came through and he sold out an entire weekend of like 65 people per class. And I was like, how is it that somebody I never heard about mm -hmm. is selling out workshops and I have to work for the entire month and tell people every, like, you know, every day, yeah. every class. And I was teaching 20 classes a week to just, you know, so that's yeah. a lot of promotion for me. So I found out about Instagram and how he was using it as a tool to get the word out there. And so I started kind of studying what Instagram uh, teachers were, were doing and I mimicked a little bit or a lot. I noticed that their photos had a certain quality, a certain brightness to them that they were taking up a certain amount of space and the colors were more vibrant. and. Um, and they're branded, meaning like you go on their account and you know, oh, this is a yoga teacher versus uh, how, what I've been doing with Instagram prior was just like, oh, taking a photo of the street and taking a photo of this bush that yeah. I like. Yeah. And I realized that when, uh, as a brand, nobody, nobody knew what I was. So there was mm. no um, possible way for somebody to say, oh, this is a yoga teacher. Yes, follow. So, yeah. I, so I essentially I branded myself and I yeah. put up better content and um, it was a little easier then, as far as anytime there's a new social media platform, there's always an op a great opportunity at that time to get in there quickly. And uh, the platform wants to build itself, so they build up accounts quickly. How long have you been on Instagram now? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. It feels I, I mean, at least five or six years uh, I'm not sure how old it is pretty pretty close to when they started all right yeah all right okay. yeah it's a great so, question yeah a lot of new teachers get a little bit scared when they see pictures like you and they think okay I want to use it as a promotion but I can't do this fancy poses and maybe I'm also not that good in branding yeah and you say branding is very important but is it more important than Authenticity? Is that the right word in English? Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what would be the difference between authenticity and branding? Good question. Branding is just taking your authenticity yeah. and showing people that this is my authentic self. All right. Nothing more than that. A lot of people think of branding, they think they have to go outside of who they are and then do that. All I did with my branding was take photos of what I was already doing. Mm -hmm. You know? So mm -hmm. this is not like. I didn't say, oh, I gotta do fancy poses. I just took photos of my practice. All right. You follow. So same is true. You know, if if you're not a if you're not a um, if you're not a handstander, don't try to take photos of handstands. You know what I mean? You want your brand to match who you are, mm -hmm. not who somebody else is. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the the first you know the first advice is branding is authenticity exposed. Yeah. But of course, it's easier for someone who does handstands to get followers because it looks more spectacular on the picture and it's a visual. On the media. platform of Instagram, yes. Yeah. Yes. 
But on YouTube, it, no one cares. Mm -hmm. YouTube's a different platform and it's mm -hmm. about education. Mm -hmm. So if you're an educator, you find the platform that is is suitable to you. Yeah. So if I, if I was primarily a meditation teacher, I'm not gonna use Instagram as my yeah. necessarily, I might, you know, use the stories and I take photos of me meditating around and it would be, I know I, there are successful meditation teachers on Instagram, but they more, you know, in that sense, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube might be the way to go. All right. It's about your words, about what you're saying, you know, rather than the, the image. Yeah. Do you have any other advice uh, for yoga teachers that's just starting out with marketing and social media? Yeah. Uh, the, the most important thing is human connection. So whether you use whether you use Instagram to connect with people, Facebook, YouTube, it doesn't really matter. But the most important thing is that you are authentic with your delivery. So anytime you are putting yourself out there that you're being who you truly are and that's usually what people what holds people back from some, doing uh, social media is I don't want to share who I am so publicly mm -hmm. um, and that that's the that's the yoga part that's the part where you have to really do the internal work the meditation work the self inquiry work to get more clear as to who you are and confident that you are a beautiful person and that that itself is a selling point And most people don't approach social media because they don't have that foundational feeling that I'm already good enough. And the fear of putting themselves out there and being rejected is what holds people back. So my advice is to really do the practices, whether it's yoga, tai chi, meditation, whatever your thing is, and the self-inquiry to really go deeper into yourself And, and pull out all of the stuff that doesn't serve you. Pull out all the stuff that says you're not good enough and get to the foundation of who you are really. Because who you are on the deepest level is has nothing to do with the clothes you wear, the, what you look like on the outside. It doesn't even have to do with your personality. It has to do with what's breathing inside of you, that living energy that's, that's connected. And when you recognize that I'm living, breathing nature in the form of a body, then what's the big deal about posting a photo on Instagram, you know? So ultimately it's about that. And when you get to that place through your, your internal work, then it's just a matter of marrying the images or the, um, the delivery on say YouTube or the words that you're writing uh, with, with who you are. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, you know, it's, It's simple when you really break it down. It's, it's a challenge to get to that place, but it's definitely simple as far as marketing is easy. Uh, it's just overwhelming because we haven't gotten to that place of authenticity yet and being okay and enjoying who we are. Um, so yeah, I guess that would be the most important advice here uh, that I would, I would have to offer. Absolutely. Great. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, my And pleasure. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the conference. It was great. Having you as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.